ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಐ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮನೋರಮಾ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ನೂಪುರ ಭ್ರಮರಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಟು ದ ಶೋಧ ಸರಣಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರವಣ ಸರಣಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆಡಿಟರಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ವಿ ನೂಪುರ ಭ್ರಮರಿ the reputed institute of karnataka for qualitative research and writing have now come up with another series shodha sarani an art research series this series is dedicated to all kinds of performing arts including allied art forms our aim is to encourage promote qualitative research and help in the upcoming studies by establishing the productive research to the art this week we are bringing the dance aspects of gupta period gupta period is considered as the golden era by most historians excellencies were achieved in terms of education administration science literature and so on during the gupta reign such growth influenced the social life of its people that further nourished art and culture too this week of shodha sarani bringing the research presentation by nagaranjita yes research scholar from bangalore on the topic dance during gupta period according to inscriptions sculpture and literary sources welcome nagaranjita over to you shri guru bhyo namaha namaste everyone imperial guptas were known to be one of the greatest indigenous dynasties of ancient india who ruled a very vast empire of indian subcontinent fourth to 6th century which is the early gupta period is generally considered as the golden era revolutionary development were taking place in all the fields when guptas came to power it was a progressive country in terms of art science agriculture healthcare maths economics administration and so on the period observed many eminent personalities like aryabhatta dhanavantri vatsyayana kalidasa varuchi and so on extraordinary contributions have happened in their respective fields even to this day so to understand the dance of that gupta period we need to understand the sources like the inscriptions sculptures and literature of that period so dance of gupta period according to these various sources can be divided into five different categories like the royal courts the temples the home premises the festivities and the theatricals dance in royal courts temples home premises were very classic intricate and they were very structured and formative in nature and the dance in festivities were more simple and popular the dance intrinsic to drama or the natya was having the intermingling of both simple and the intricate ones hence dance of gupta period can actually be classified into the marga as well as the desi forms information on technique or the description of the desi forms is very rare we do find that mallinatha in his commentary on megaduta mentions that the dance that is observed in the uh, ujjaini mahakaleshwara temple danced by the dancing girls in the temples as the deshika form however the uh, through the influence of pravruti or the regional styles on dance during gupta period the parallel existence of the desi can be ascertained the dance in the royal courts were mostly comprised of the courtesan dances the courtesans played very vital role in the dance of the royal courts during gupta period 
they used to dance what were called as Sangeetaka and Chatushpada. Sangeeta, Sangeetaka were Rasabhinaya based. They included thematic presentations and Chatushpadas were having the music system explained in them, which correlates more to the Nati Shastra music system. In one of the plays called Ubhaya Visarika, which is one of the Chaturbani of Gupta period, there is mention of Purandra Vijayam Sangeetaka, as well as Malavika, when she starts to begin her performance, she sings a song called Chatushpada in Malavika Nimitram as well. The dance in royal courts were very intricate, very structured and formative, and they involved rigorous trainings that the courtesan dancers underwent, and so they were assessed by very professional dancers who were called the assessors. So it consisted of a pedagogy that is very clearly evident through the description of these intricate details of the dances from both sculptures as well as the literature. When you see the sculptures of Diyogar Uttar Pradesh belonging to fifth century, which depicts the troupe of female dancers, we can observe that they are all well versed even in playing the musical instruments as well. We also see a decorated pillar from Mathura of 5th century showing Samutsarita Matali, where the two couple are dancing. And the courtesans not only performed in royal courts, they also performed in the temples. They performed the performances called as Sangeetaka recitals in temples. We come across such temple dances in Nubhayabhisarika of Varanchi. The Ujjaini Mahakaleshwara temple had the courtesan dancers dancing during the evenings, mentions Kalidasa in his Meghaduta. And also Malinata in his commentary mentions that these dances were the Deshika dance forms. We also come across what is called as idle positions that the temples were uh, going uh, through these festivities called the idle processions which were termed as Devadronyam. We come across this term in the Karmadanda inscription of Kumara Gupta. We also come across a sculpture panel where, which belongs to Gupta period, where we observe a set of dancing girls performing before this idol procession. Here in this sculpture panel, we see that each and every dancer is lined one behind the other and the way they are holding their hands interlocked with each other looks like a form of Pindi Bandha that they are performing and it is very evident through this sculpture and as well as the Karmadamda inscription that there were idol processions happening in the temples as well as the dancers were dancing in these temple processions. There were also musicians. We can observe in these sculptures that there are different flutists, there are drummers, there are also small young kids who are following the lineage of that family tradition, who are carrying that tradition forward. We also come across a kind of organized festivals in the temples called as Samaja. These Samajas were part of the musical and dance concerts or performances that were happening in the temple premises and every householder took part in these festival gatherings. Vatsyayana in Kama Sutra mentions that every householder on a daily basis has to take part in the musical and dance performances. And so the householders in Gupta period, we understand that they were taking part in these uh, temple performances every day and organized in confined places with limited audiences, these samajas were the festivals that were conducted in the, uh, in the temple premises on daily basis or on weekly basis or even on monthly basis. So in, it is very much unlike the Mauryan times where samaja through the Shahabazgari, Karavela and Asik inscriptions as well as the Dhammapada text and uh, we come across that the Samaja festivities were very extravagant and very grand festivals 
that were celebrated in the open air theaters. However, in Gupta period, they are organized in very much confined places where there were music and dance concerts happening with limited audience. So through the tradition of courtesans being followed since many centuries, it shows that the similar practices were still existing in Gupta period. However, the way that the Samajas were conducted were quite different from that was being con conducted before in the Ma Mauryan times. There were something called Goshtis uh, that were held in every house. These were like the symposiums or the discussions and deliberations that were conducted on daily basis in the evenings with the kith and kin of the householders. So the Goshtis Boshti, were the public gatherings at home premises itself where the dance and music concerts used to happen. And these were called as Goshti Shala or the, the salon spaces at the residential spaces of every house was called as Goshti Shala. Houses were constructed suitably uh, to accommodate these Goshtis or the small musical and dance concerts in every house. We, we come across such descriptions in Mandasur stone inscription of Kumara Gupta, as well as Vatsyayana mentions about how the every house has to contain these spaces where they can accommodate such discussions, deliberations and performances whenever required. Audiences were among the known people to the householders, so naturally the house would accommodate such people, such small number of people. And Sangeetaka was one such recital which was performed even in the home premises. The dance recitals also included the nritya, um, the nritta items with Devata Mangalam being one of the items that was performed as part of these solo recitals conducted usually in the courtesan residences and there were the chief courtesans who used to con conduct such home concerts quite often as a competition between the two different courtesan dancers and they would offer them a gift as well when we see the festivals that were being celebrated during the Gupta, Gupta period. We come across Madanotsava, Vasantotsava and many such festivals mentioned in both Vatsyayana Kama Sutra as well as the works of Kalidasa. So we understand that the social festivities were part of the seasonal gatherings in the city. Dance was integral part of these festivities called as Utsavas and this festival uh, called Madanotsava is also celebrated as Suvasantaka, as described by, by Vatsyayana himself. And it included theatricals, dance and music and instrumental concerts as well. The pop, it was one of the popular festivals celebrated in worship of Madana, the god of love. And it was usually celebrated during Maga Shukla Panchami. And of course, the Vasantotsava celebrations included theatrical performances. Madhavikagni Mitram of Kalidasa starts with the very address that this drama is being uh, staged in the Vasantotsava celebration. When we understand or uh, understand various dramas that are uh, written by various poets during Gupta period, we understand that dance was very much intrinsic to drama of Gupta period. Actors of the play had expertise in dance techniques to match the description of the dance in the scripts. When, uh, when we understand the Vararuchi and Kalidasa works, we understand that both, both the authors or both the poets were well versed in Natya Shastra. They knew the technique of Natya Shastra because the description of these dance dancers and the terms of dance is very deep and intricate. So with that, we understand that they were definitely well versed in the text of Nadi Shastra. Hence, when in Gupta period, when these, uh, these dramas were being staged, it, it required that the actors of the play had expertise in dance technique because it had to match the description of the character in that, uh, in that drama itself. So 
there were natya natya charyas who were giving the training to these actors to perform any drama before any social festivities or any other performance so natya charyas were the teachers and nata nati and nartaki or the nartaka were the actors they that performed in these dramas also the young children of these nata nati or nartaki were called as nateraka who also took the training under these natya charyas so we understand that the uh, heritage was carried from one generation to other the tradition of the drama or the acting was carried from one generation to other and they learned they all learned dance as part of it and the plot in the play contained dance sequences for example in malavika in malavika agni mitram malavika's dancing in the royal court itself is a main plot where malavika dances by starting through the chaturshpada song as well as there is a pandita kaushiki later on who judges the dance competition between the two dancers and the troupe of dancers dancing for yodhiyaka songs mentioned in padataditaka chaturbhani is also a dance sequence very important one mentioned in the plot of the play and mayura sena dancing in the home premises of Veshyadhyaksha in Padadaditaka is also a main plot that comes in the dance sequence of the drama. And there are many other such examples like Madana Sena's dance in the temple of Narayana in Ubhayal Bhisarika of Varaluchi, as well as Priyangu Sena's dance cont contest at the royal palace with Devadatta in the same Ubhaya Bhisarika. So we understand that not only the actors even the audience uh, audience understood the technique of dance very much well during gupta period because not only uh, the uh, not only the drama having the uh, dance plots and the actors learning it only when the audience enjoyed thoroughly that the dance will be performed again and again in those uh, as a part of those dramas so we understand that everybody including the audience the performers and the organizers understood the language of dance the technique of dance that was performed during this gupta period and these plays were very much compliant to natya shastra when we go through the chaturbani or the uh, works of kalidasa we understand that they are very much compliant to natya shastra the play contains the preliminaries mentioned at the beginning of the play and also the format of chaturbhani is very much compliant to the bhana type of play as prescribed by bharata himself even the names of courtesans end with datta mitra or sena like mayura sena deva sena madana sena priyangu sena narayana datta deva datta and so on it is just an example to give that even bharata mentions that the courtesans names should end with these suffixes so there was a lot of adoration to natya dharmi mode of expression in gupta period is what we understand for example if we observe the harishena's inscription written for samudra gupta in alhabad stone pillar inscription it is versified is it is very much poetic poetically written harishena was one of the famous ministers in the court of samudra gupta and also a poet we understand that they had that love for expression in love for expression they were very expressive and they had a lot of adoration towards natya dharmi mode of expression itself when we observe these three sculpture panels we understand that uh, in the first sculpture panel which depicts the shurpanaka episode meeting Ra shurpanaka meeting rama and lakshmana and lakshmana disfiguring shurpanaka we we see shurpanaka in kunchita karana it is a frozen movement where she is just about to run just about to run and we also see the goddess ganga's uh, sculpture belonging to gupta period where she is standing on makara and if you observe closely uh, there are two couple musicians playing the drums 
we understand that this is very unique way of representation of goddess Ganga to Gupta period. However, we see Ganga standing on Makara in other periods as well. But the way of expression is very Natyadharmi way of expression where they have added a musician couple also to represent goddess Ganga in a dancing pose. So what we understand through all these is that the dance of Gupta period included dance in royal courts, temples, home premises, festivities, and the theatricals as well. And the dance techniques involved both Marga and Desi varieties. We see Sangeetaka, Nritta, Chatushpada, where Marga styles, which involved rigorous training and which involved intricate techniques, where dancers were enforced uh, on rigorous training and which confirms the existence of a pedagogy which had to be learned and the influence of pravrti or the regional styles on art suggests that existence of deshi in parallel also was there during Gupta period and since the Manalus, Manasolasa text itself was written later on during post Gupta period we understand that though there is no specific mention of the term Desi or Marki, there was coexistence of both these styles and dance in Gupta period significantly comprised of courtesans. The courtesans were very much uh, enjoyed the high social order and they contributed towards the dance of Gupta period immensely. And also the Gupta art was very deep and very expressive and they had a greater influence on dance as well and though not much about angika techniques of dance can be understood we definitely understand that there were sangeetaka and chatushpada kind of dances that were danced during gupta period and we also understand that natya shastra was very much uh, existing during that period in practice and uh, there was an unstated bifurcation of the Marga and the Desi styles during Gupta period. So whatever we understand through the study of these sources of Gupta period, we understand that the Gupta kings have contributed immensely for the propagation, preservation of art and also specifically dance form itself. I would like to thank my guide, Dr. Shobha Shashi Kumar, for guiding me throughout this research with most intriguing questions, which helped me in making this study a possible reality. I would like to thank Dr. Manorama Bian and Nupura Brahmari Foundation for giving me this opportunity to present this study about the dance of Gupta period. I would also like to acknowledge my humble gratitude to Shatavadani Dr. R. Ganesh, whose foremost advices and guidance had made the study a possible reality, and my deepest gratitude to historian and epigraphist Dr. Shesha Shastri for his priceless inputs, and also Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts and Archaeological Survey of India, Kumrar, Bihar Research Society, and director and staff of National Museum Delhi and Lucknow State Museum, Mathura Government Museum and Patna State Museum and Buddha Smriti Park Museum and Bihar Museum, where I could fetch most valuable data or regarding the sculptures and inscriptions pertaining to Gupta period. Thank you. Namaste. Srimati Nagaranjita has methodically studied the dance references found in the Gupta period. Though short and crisp, it is noteworthy that she has delved into both the literature and sculptures of that period. Much appreciations for her insightful presentation. These act as a diving board for further research whether researcher can go into depths from the point left at by Nagaranjita. On the whole, it was a commendable presentation by Dr. Dvarita Vishwanatha, dance researcher, author, writer and 
teacher bangalore congratulations to shrimati nagaranjita on her neat insightful and well researched presentation she has drawn quite exhaustively from creative literature and also from some sculptures to establish her hypothesis analysis of dance in the gupta period is especially tricky as there are not many surviving temples from that era and the researcher has done a commendable job the researcher can also have a look at some creative literature in the post gupta period to see the influence that the golden era of india had on classical art by arjun bharadwaj contributing editor preksha the researcher has gone through a thorough process of collection of data the biggest challenge is to analyze and interpret with partial and ambiguous evidences especially in case of historical studies the researcher has handled this diligently and coherently the researcher may have to continue the meticulous process of collecting further data and evidences and accordingly reconsider the inferences and conclusions whenever appropriate this work needs that continuous study to revise and reiterate stands taken best wishes for further research by dr shobha shashikumar dance practitioner guru researcher and author